All right guys, so here we have a 2018 Mercedes CLA. I believe it's a 250. CLA 250, all the CLAs are the same though, as long as it's within this age or year range. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is wipe the outside and then we'll get to the specific details of this car. All right, now that we have the outsides wiped, it's a frameless door car. So the first thing we have to do is trick all the doors so that the windows are in a fully up position before we start tinting them. Once you trick all the doors, you can actually lock all the doors to make sure that they don't get accidentally untricked while you're working on the car. You can just hit the lock switch on the driver's door and that'll make sure that the windows stay tricked up. Now we did wipe the outside of the windows while the doors were closed and the windows were, uh, the windows were tricked up, but the bottom didn't get wiped and the top didn't get wiped. So we'll just go over that again really quick. And then for this car, we're gonna do the same prepping process as we would with any other vehicle. Now, one thing I've noticed already on this car is this window is an aftermarket piece of glass. So the benefit of hand cutting is that you don't have to worry about that matching up because if you pre-cut it, it's probably not gonna match the contour or the, uh, the, the edge of the top and the sides. And you can tell that it's aftermarket by looking at this etching here. You can look from the outside. That doesn't say Mercedes-Benz. This says, this is a Mercedes-Benz logo, but this one isn't. So you could tell this is aftermarket glass. All right, now with this car, we're going to be using a 40 inch roll. I'd recommend to use a 20 inch roll, but all I have is the 40 inch roll. So you're going to see the technique that I do to get the most out of a 40 inch roll. And um, this is beneficial because you don't have to have a 40 and 20 inch roll on hand. You can use just a 40 inch roll. And I mainly have this because I do most of my cuts on the plotter. But if you guys are just starting off and you just want to buy one roll of film, that'll do the back window and the doors. 40 is the way to go. Now, Typically with a frameless door window, I would shove down the gasket on the inside, but it's actually uh, very stiff and it seems to be a little fragile. So if I do stuff it down, I could damage it. So I'm going to avoid that. I'm going to show you how to cut it out and install it with the gasket, not push down. So the first step we're going to do is lay the bulk material out and we'll cut the excess off right away so we can save that for the other side. Before we do anything further, let's lay the dryer sheet out on the back window. When doing a dryer sheet, it's a little mist. Cut this extra material off, and then we'll roll it up and we can actually lay this on the door. All right, so just like any other frameless door window, we're gonna line up the bottom, cut the front edge, shift it forward an eighth of an inch, make sure the bottom's lined up, cut the back edge, shift it forward so there's a handline gap here, mount it in place, cut the top and install it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll make sure that bottom edge is straight, it's straight, mount it in place before I cut the front edge just so it doesn't move. Release it from the, the mount and shift it forward that eighth of, eighth of an inch. Line the bottom up again, mount it in place again. Cut the back. And then we're gonna do that final shift so that we have a hairline gap in, on the rear. The tighter it is, the better. And that looks pretty good. At the same time, making sure that bottom edge is lined up. Hold it in place with one hand, squeegee with the other. Double check your back edge. Make sure it's nice and even. 
and then we can go ahead and cut the top edge. Always make sure you have a fresh blade when cutting the top edge. And then we'll go ahead and round out the corners. And you want to try to match the round that's up in this corner on the top edge as best as possible. And then the bottom corners, corners always keep tight. We'll mount it on the outside for installation. And then we'll go inside. Soapy water solution. You can lay a towel on these switches here. Mercedes are a little bit more temperamental. Down the back. And then overlapping strokes. So now when you're doing a frameless window with a CLA, just like any other frameless window, lay the front edge on first, bring down the bottom and the back while sliding it into the front and laying it across the top. You notice you have the extra material hanging over. You want to take your easy reach, pull the back gasket away on the bottom and get it down below that. It might sound a little bad, but it's not. Just to film hitting the easy reach. And you want to try to do this fairly quick because it can tend to uh, start setting up very fast with the gasket putting pressure on it. Now the whole idea here is to get a nice even gap around the edges, but not big, not a big gap. You want to keep it nice and tight, but if it does overhang, you're going to have an issue with peeling. So you definitely need a very slight gap. That looks good. You want to make sure there's no material bunched across the bottom. It's in place and ready to squeegee. Thumb on the top, holding it in place as you squeegee. Not as hard pressure. And then we'll go across the bottom. Checking the edges as you go. And then we'll give it one final pass. Now we push out the edges with the gray lid coat card and the blue huck towel with the heat gun. This seals the edges up really nice. Then we'll go across the inside with the gray lid coat card and the heat gun and I'm just gonna heat it. You wanna make sure not to hit the, uh, the heat directly on the door panel. You wanna kinda hit here so that the heat flows down and you're not gonna end up melting the door panel and push at the same time. Overlapping strokes. And then slide across. And then into the front as well. Just to make sure everything's laid down. And with frameless doors, you have two choices of making sure that the tint is cured and ready to untrick the window. Because say that you're tinting this car, it's about two hours. You have about maybe an hour to allow this to cure and the customer to leave unless you do hold it. You can either sit here with the heat gun for about five minutes per window, or you can use an infrared heat lamp like you see here. These are about $200 on eBay. Uh, I don't recall, I got it about 10 years ago, so it's pretty old. So you can put it in front of the window about a foot away, angle it towards the bottom of the area, and just let that sit for about five minutes, and then move it along as you go, and that'll make sure that the window's cured. Just give it one look over before you do untrick the latch and allow the window to roll down. Same thing with this. The only thing different we're gonna do is shift it back and not forward. Bottom edge lines up, 
Cut the back first because that's the way we're shifting it. Shift it back slightly. Eighth of an inch, not much at all. Then we're gonna mount it in place, cut the front edge. And then go ahead, release that, and then create your slight hairline gap along the front edge. Making sure that the bottom is lined up as well, so everything is even. And then we can mount that in place across the top and cut the top edge. Round out the corners, keeping those bottom edges nice and tight. And then mounting it on the outside to be installed. Now when I do these back doors, I like to take my easy reach or my yellow contour, stick it behind this gasket here and get a nice amount of soap and water behind there because sometimes it can cause the tint to stick when you're putting in place because it's a, it'll be a dry spot back there. And on the back doors, we're gonna squeeze you from the back to the front because you have the open area here for the dirty water to just run off of the window instead of pushing it into the gasket. Now with this, we're gonna put the back edge in first, line up the bottom, allow that to fall into place. You'll overhang on the top a little bit. Slide it into the back, across the bottom. You can see down here, I'm pulling the gasket away, sliding it into place. This is where you wanna make sure that you have enough soapy water or enough soap in your soapy water solution to give you enough time to play with the film, get it into place to exactly where you want because if, the, if it's too tacky, it's gonna be a literal nightmare. So always start off with extra soapy water and adjust accordingly. We look good on that. Tint's already wet so we can go ahead and squeegee it. Giving it one last hard push and then we'll go over it with the Grey Lake Co. Huck towel and the heat gun. And then we'll go ahead and push the bottom edge out with the Grey Lake Co. and the heat gun. Let's give that back edge one last push. You can do the back edge with either an Easy Reach or the Grey Lake Co. card. I like to do it with the Grey Lake Co. card because it gets a nice even pressure in a small area. Let's go ahead and do this quarter glass window. For this quarter window, I'm gonna use a scrap piece off of the extra material that we have on these back doors here. You could probably almost do two doors with this one piece. So to do this, we're gonna make sure we have the tint side facing the glass. Of course, you guys learned that in the course. Spray the soapy water solution on the window. If you have a straight edge, I like to line the straight edge up, which we don't have a straight edge. So I'm just gonna go for it, cut all edges. Lay it in place, squeeze it in place as best as possible. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut this extra material off first to make it a lot easier to work with. And the first thing I like to do is cut this bottom edge. Cut the back edge, well the front edge. Make sure that top is squeegee down good and it's in place, not moving. And we'll go ahead and cut the top edge. Then we can go ahead and round the corners out. This back corner I like to round out a little bit bigger than I should, just because it gets tight in that back area. And the top corner, nice and tight. And the same for the bottom corner. Now for pulling the release on it, you can do it two ways. You can mount it on the window and pick at the film. I'll do it that way for you guys since you're beginners and most likely uh, want to do it the easiest way. We'll go ahead and mount that in place just like it were a door window. I like to use my three and a half inch because it is a small window, three and a half inch yellow turbo. Soapy water. Take your fingernail and you're literally just going to rub the top and that release liner will come right off. And we can grab it, touching minimal, as little film as possible. I like to grab just the back corner 
and it's on my hand here. I can swap hands, put it into place. Try not to touch any of the door panel or the back edge. And then we'll take the easy reach or your yellow contour. Same thing with the doors, pull that gasket away, lay it down into place. making sure you have a nice even edge across the top. Now you see how I, I rounded that corner out smaller than it should or bigger, it's a bigger radius than it should be because once this all covers up there, uh, if the material is too long, you get all bunched up there and possibly peel. But this window does not shift when you open and close the doors. Now we can go ahead and squeegee this in place. Again, holding it with one hand, squeegeeing with the other. Now with these quarter glass windows, uh, you can push them out with the blue huck towel and the gray lid card and the heat gun. But what I like to do is go on the outside with the heat, with the little chiseler and heat the window at the same time and check the edges to make sure they're laying down properly. If they're not laying down properly, you'll see like a little white area and you'll know right away. So I'll just push the edge down, make sure it stays and it looks good. And we'll do the same thing for all four doors. I like to just really check the, the corners or push the corners and check the top at the same time. And these look really good because we made nice and clean cuts and uh, we're good to go. We can move on to the back window. All right, we have the bulk material laid out on the back window. Obviously we dried it, we dryer sheeted it already. So that dryer sheet is dry and uh, we're doing 20% on this back window. So you can see there's excess material here. If you were doing the same percentage on all four doors and the back window, which we aren't on this car, we're doing 20 on the back and 35 on the doors, you could use this extra material to do one of the front doors and uh, you could save some material doing that, but I can't unfortunately do that. So I'm gonna roll this up and save it for another vehicle for another day. But we got the bulk material laid out here and the first thing we're gonna do is mount it in place and do like we do with any back window, like I showed you in the course, we're gonna cut the excess material off shrink it, cut it to size, and then install it. So let's do that. Nothing crazy about this window. It's actually fairly easy. Maybe some bigger fingers on the top, but it's an easy back window to shrink. Just use your felt card and the heat gun and take your time. All right, now the window is all shrunk. We're gonna use a drop light on the inside so we can see the line that we have to follow and we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. That's right, so another fun part, not so fun really, is installing this piece of film on the inside of the car. This is very tight in here. And uh, one way you could do it is you could take the seats and put them down. And if you can fit in the back seat with the seats down, that's the way to do it. This is probably how I'm going to do it because I know that I'm not fitting my arms there with the headrests in the way and the headrests are not detachable. This is going to be a little gymnastics experiment that we have here so you guys can see how you properly do this. Um, we're going to do this Frankenstein method off of the back. Use whatever, whatever method that uh, you've learned or felt to be the most convenient for you based on the course. I did show the Frankenstein method off the back window, the Frankenstein method off the door as well as the reverse roll method. So use what is best for you. Everyone has their own preference. Doing this is just squeegeeing off any contamination that could be on the window or on the window film in this water. All right, so we're gonna crawl in here. When I do this, I like to put my feet in the trunk and we're gonna clean the back window just like any other window. Little tip for this car is to lay a towel across these back speakers and do it just like you would any other vehicle. All right, this is where it gets extremely interesting and 
be creative with it because you're gonna have to. Now in this back window, we're gonna use a side swiper as far as we can. And then we use the bulldozer to finish it in the middle where the brake light is. Wipe the blade to make sure it's clean, start from the center and work out. And the one last step, just like any other back window, is we'll take the gray lid co wrapped in a towel and push out the top edge. The last step is just wiping that dryer sheet off the back window and then going over the outside with heat, or you can put that infrared heat lamp on the outside and let it sit there for about 10 minutes, but that's just an option. But this back window looks good. The only thing I'm gonna do is go over it with the heat around the edges on the top and make sure that's sealed up nice. And the only other thing that you have to do before you let this car leave is to check the bottom edges, look from the outside, make sure there's no fingers popping up which there isn't, then you can go ahead and stick your finger in the latch, pull the door handle, unlock the door, and then you are good to go. You can close the door and allow the customer to leave. That's how you tint a Mercedes CLA 250 2018.